Yep. Uh, I'm Nathaniel Wood. I'm uh, in group four. My topic was the uh, crystallization of Sufism and Rumi. Uh, before we get started, I'll talk a little bit about uh, Sufism. Uh, Sufism is a particular sect within Islam. Uh, their big thing is they try to abstain from outside prestigious pleasures and wealths that are sought by most people. Uh, it used to be a one-on-one -on -one relationship, kind of a master and apprentice deal, but uh, as time progressed, the masters became so widely known that they had too many followers, which uh, this led to the need for a teaching manual. And uh, the three main kind of masters I'll talk about are Al Jazali, Shahab al Din, Surawardi, and Buhi al Din Ibn Arabi. Uh, the first guy is Al Jazali. Um, his, his big contribution to all of this was the revivification of the religious sciences. Um, it kind of dealt with all the fields of Islamic science that they had. Uh, this included uh, the fiqh, which is their jurisprudence, which if you didn't know what that word was, neither do I, that means they kind of their theory of law. So it covers their theory of law, their kalam, which is their speech or their words, theology, and general Sufism. Uh, there's four general sections to this kind of book. That is the acts of worship, the norms of daily life, the ways to perdition, and the ways to salvation. Uh, this guy is actually really quite well known. He's still regarded by some, actually most, to be the most influential Muslim since the actual prophet Muhammad himself. Uh, the next guy we're talking about is uh, Shahab al-Din Surawardi. Uh, he's known as the great master of illumination. His big thing is comparing everything in the universe to different forms of light. Uh, it starts at the very top with the light of lights. That's kind of God and heaven and what have you. And it kind of progresses down slowly. Uh, everything else is in a diminishing order and intensity from this light. So God and heaven is the light of lights. And we are just rays of light off of him. And everything else is different rays of light. That is this kind of way of explaining how life worked. Uh, his other big thing was there are two parts to the human soul. Uh, the first part is always in heaven. Uh, it, that's where it stays no matter what. And that's kind of why uh, humans are naturally sad, because the second part is in the body. Uh, we're always sad because we're missing one half of our soul. It's always in heaven, whereas the other half is always on earth. Uh, we're only going to finally return to actually being happy when we return to the land of the immortal light, which is kind of where the light of light comes into play. Uh, the third guy is Buhi uh, al-Din Ibn Arabi. Uh, his kind of thought process was that God is quasi-unknowable, uh, and he can, not everyone can take journeys toward the divine, but in order to take a journey there, there are several things that you have to do. Uh, you had to go through a several spiritual progresses, including, sorry, I'm sorry, human spiritual progress has uh, several series of journeys. This included, uh, but not only, uh, away from the divine, towards the divine, and within the divine. This is kind of how you got to know it. Uh, not everyone could undertake these journeys, but uh, in order to do so, they had several conditions. Uh, you had to have a vow of silence, isolation, hunger, and also sleep deprivation. So you had to really kind of isolate yourself from everything you ever know in order to go on these journeys. Uh, as human beings need God for their existence, God also needs them in order to be known. That's his big, for lack of a better term, that's his big catchphrase. That's what he's known for, is that kind of thought. Is that not only do we need God, but God also needs us. Uh, the last guy here is Jalal al-Din Rumi, the uh, second major topic that I'm going to talk about. Uh, he was a uh, really creative poet at the time. Uh, he really believed in the use of music, poetry, and dance as kind of his path for reaching God. That's how he, that's how he met God. For him, music was so intense that it both destroyed and resurrected the soul at the same time. Um, that's that's how much he believed in this. That, and obviously you can see there, uh, Kevin Bacon plays a uh, 
excellent portrayal of that, great analogy, as he kind of explained that dance is also needed, but in a small town and in the movie Footloose, instead of street business. Uh, the last gentleman is Shams of Tabriz. Uh, this was kind of Rumi's master, and his, he's really his best friend. Uh, the two, kind of the big thing around him is the two ways that they could have possibly met. The first of those, which is, Rumi was kind of sitting around a stack of books just reading. Uh, Shams walks by and asks what, what Rumi is doing. Uh, Rumi responds by saying, something you can't understand. Well, this kind of obviously makes Shams angry, so he picks up the books and throws them in the pool of water. Uh, Rumi goes to scramble to pick them up. However, when he goes to pick them up, the books are not wet. And when Rumi asks, how is this possible, Shams replied, it's something you can't understand. Had to give it back. Uh, the second possible way that they could have met was similar to the first. Rumi was reading a book as he was in the first story. Uh, Shams walks by and asks the same question, what are you doing? Uh, Rumi responds by saying, something you wouldn't understand. The books then catch on fire, and Rumi is astounded. Uh, Rumi asks, how is this possible? What's going on here? And Shams replies, it's something you can't understand. Uh, this led to Rumi and Shams becoming the best of friends. Uh, they spent, I think it was 30 years together living. Uh, and actually, if you read the book, it describes them as lovers. Uh, they actually aren't gay like I thought. That apparently in the older ways, that means that they were the best of friends, actually lovers of God, is how that was meant. Um, Shams was inspiration of most of Ruby's works, including his big, his big kind of thing was the uh, Mapnawi, or his couplets. The uh, couplets is actually 30,000 verses. And uh, there's kind of, Shams left him at one point to go to another thing of life, and that's kind of what created the inspiration was that he lost his master, he lost everything that he kind of believed in. You know, Shams was telling him everything he, he was in from the start. And that was kind of what his inspiration was in his books. And that's it.